answers. I think I'm entitled. You want answers. I want the truth. You can't handle the truth. Truth, justice, in the NBA rolling your way right now. For this Friday, June the 5th of 2015, 44 points from LeBron James. Not good enough, though. And a double-digit lead of 14 points early on for Cleveland turned out to be not good enough. Bottom line was that the Golden State Warriors uh, were more of a complete team and played more of a complete game than did Cleveland. Granted, you know, the Cavs had chances, uh, I thought, in the first half to extend their lead even further than where it was. Bottom line was, was that after the nice start by the Cavs, Golden State chipped away at the lead in the second quarter, and then the third quarter, you know, uh, we saw Cleveland once again reestablish control after a tie halftime score. And then Cleveland couldn't hold on, though, as Golden State got that um, finishing kick in the third. And then the fourth quarter, oh boy, what, what, was it a great performance by LeBron or what in a losing effort? Remember, the LeBron James only came out of this game on two different occasions. Early in the second quarter, rested four minutes. Early in the fourth, rested three minutes, okay? And when he came back after that second rest, you know, with nine minutes to go in regulation, LeBron, I think, hit three or four shots in the row. A couple of shots, by the way, were from difficult angles. Um, he had 44 points, and you're thinking, okay, Cleveland's going to get one on the road at a place where only um, three teams have won all season, Oracle Arena, counting the playoffs as well. But again... Cleveland couldn't finish the job. They couldn't finish it. And I said this at the, um, I believe it was Game 3 of the Eastern Conference Finals. I'm going to say it again. Okay, When Atlanta had an opportunity to win the game at the end of regulation during a tie situation, and they shoot a three to try to win it, I said to myself, why? This case, when LeBron James is great as he was, and he was great on uh, Thursday night, I'm still going to question why take that three-point shot from that difficult angle with time winding down in a tie ball game, and you know you have the last shot. I'll never understand that, okay? To me, a two-pointer, a three-pointer, what's the difference, okay, as far as the final score, okay? Unless you're making a side book with a Betty, you know, on the team and saying, okay, we're going to win this game by three points, why are you shooting a three-pointer in the final seconds of the game on the road, okay? I, I don't understand that. Work for a better shot because Iguodala, who did a decent job defensively, I thought did a really good job on that particular play when the game was 98-98 in the final seconds, and LeBron from that left side angle is trying to take a three-point shot, that, and when it was released, even by our standards, we knew it was not going to go in. And sure enough, you know, Shepard on the follow at the buzzer, he almost hits it. <laughs> Shepard almost got the follow shot. Can you believe that from the opposite side? But the bottom line, I'll never understand why teams do that. We've seen that more than once in the playoffs, first by Atlanta and, and now um, by Cleveland just a couple of weeks later. Thing went to overtime, and that overtime started so, so sloppy. It, it started sloppy for both teams, but give Steph Curry credit. You know, you know the, the scary thing about this game, even though um, Golden State ended up winning it, this was not one of Curry's best games. We've seen Curry play a lot better than this. But Curry, in the overtime period on back-to-back -back possessions, was able to draw a defender inside of him on a shooting attempt. And you get him or you get Thompson or you get Draymond Grant at the foul line, it's pretty much automatic, especially if it's Curry, who had 91% uh, free throw shooting uh, for the season leading all NBA players. Hit four consecutive free throws. As a matter of fact, for a team, um, Golden State, Boy, were they on, on the money when it came to the free throw shooting. 91% from the line. Okay, And gold, and by the way, Cleveland had 68% from the line. Um, Draymond Green, Clay Thompson, who did not have a good night shooting, by the way, but made up for it with 8 of 8 free throw shooting. And Steph Curry, those three players, a combined 16 of 16 from the free throw line. Cleveland had six misses. And in a game that was this close, in a game that came down to overtime, those are one of the things you look at as far as the difference making in the game. But there's no doubt about it that this game was decided, in my opinion, by the Golden State bench. Remember, Cleveland led throughout a good part of the first half, okay? And when LeBron started to score his points, obviously, bad sign for the opposition. Even worse sign for the opposition is when the opposition's main players 
aren't getting it going. I, I think Curry in the beginning was like two for six at the end of the first quarter. So the Warriors, no question, Steve Curry needed a spark. And to me, the two biggest sparks came off the bench. Okay? With under an equal dollar, you know, good defensive night, but also shooting six of eight from the field and 15 points. You'll take that. And also Maurice Spates. This was really the unexpected part of the game. Four of eight, eight points for him from his center position. He was very, very valuable. Came in um, for Andrew Bogut at times. And in that second quarter, he, I thought, along with Iguodala, prevented Cleveland from really building on to a pretty good lead. Okay, That's when Golden State started to chip away um, first part of that second quarter. And then, again, at one point, Cleveland, late in the first quarter, had a 14-point lead, and Golden State started chipping away. The bench deserves some high marks. The Warriors bench, by the way, outscoring Cleveland 34-9. to Matter of fact, um, everybody off the Cleveland um, bench pretty much was a non-factor scoring-wise. Um, J.R. Smith had nine points, including a 29-foot three-pointer um, right before uh, halftime. And that was the last bucket he had. Didn't score in the second half or in overtime. He was pathetic, only 3 of 13. For a guy that when he's on, he's on. But last night, he was way off. Jared Smith was horrible uh, for the Cavs from quarter three onward. And um, uh, Della Vadova and James Jones uh, didn't even score. In fact, Della Vadova didn't even take a shot. And they were both limited to mitts. Golden State, 34 to 9, outscoring the Cavs as far as the bench. Everybody from the Golden State bench, by the way, scored. And as a matter of fact, we mentioned Iguodala's uh, 15 and uh, Spates 8. And look, nerves played a major role in this game for both teams, but I thought more so for Golden State in the beginning just because of how they were looking. And they were not themselves, and you give Cleveland credit for that. Again, forcing turnovers early on and winning the rebounding war. Tristan Thompson keeping possessions alive for the Cavs. You know, he had um, on the night a monster night as far as uh, rebounding. How about 15 rebounds, six of them coming on the offensive side, keeping possessions alive. But in the second half, we saw Golden State begin to chip away at that rebounding advantage. As a matter of fact, at the end of the game, it was actually Golden State that had the slight rebounding edge. Golden State, as a team, shot the ball a little bit better than Cleveland did as the, as the night wore along. And in the overtime period, um, J.R. Smith was just was really, really costing his team, um, taking ill by shots and... We already know something right now, okay? We know that LeBron James, with all of his greatness, with the 44-point effort that he had, and the amount of minutes, which we'll talk about in a second, that, that he expounded, it can't be just him. Otherwise, this is going to look like the Miami-San Antonio series from last year in the finals, in, in which, you know, LeBron was not just the main part of Miami, but he was, at times, looked like he was the only part. And can't do that in the postseason. It just doesn't work. It's too much wear and tear, too much pressure, too much for one person to try to do it all by themselves. LeBron James, to state the rather obvious, needs help. Okay, And Kyrie Irving may not be the guy. Left leg injury that he re-aggravated early in the overtime period. You can tell he was dejected when they're showing the cameras on him as he is uh, leaving the floor and going down the, um, hallway, the, uh, the hallway to the locker room. I mean, he's showing frustration, both the ejection that he couldn't be out there, but also, too, maybe that injury is, is truly all the way back. We'll, we'll, we'll get the MRI results today. But otherwise, I mean, who's going to be that second guy or the third guy for LeBron to pick up the load? The minutes that were used by Cleveland in this game were eye-opening, okay, as far as their starters. Um, Tristan Thompson, by the way, played 47 minutes. I mean, he only got to rest six and Kyrie Irving played 44, and that was early in the overtime period when he had the injury, but he had the 44 minutes amassed. Would have played probably 48 minutes as well if he hadn't gotten hurt. And um, that, that to me, was really eye-opening. As a matter of fact, Cleveland starters in this game averaged 41 minutes per player. Golden State starters averaged 37 minutes. In fact, only three players played off the Cleveland bench and only one scored. So... Uh, Good news for Cleveland, you get an extra day of rest. Normally it's a two-day gap between uh, games and the finals, but uh, we're on Friday, so Sunday would be the next game. And it can't just be LeBron James. Through all of his greatness, through all that he does offensively and defensively, uh, 
Golden State will not mind him getting shots, okay? As long as that assist total is not 9 or 10 or higher. And LeBron's um, assist total last night was not very much, but that's what Golden State wanted. So the Warriors with a hard-fought victory, and you look at the performance of Curry, started slow, but picked it up, ended up with 26 for the game. So he performed when he needed to, and Clay Thompson, not a good shooting night, 21 for him off um, fantastic free throw shooting as a part of that total. But the bench in this in this case, the balance won out over the superstar LeBron. We'll see if LeBron and Cleveland have an answer for game two, but they won't if the pattern of him um, happen to carry the load for the team for the Cleveland Cavaliers takes stage again. And this time they may not have Kyrie Irving to help out. So game two Sunday from Oracle Arena in Golden State with the Warriors winning a hard-fought battle in overtime. It was a real good game to watch. Talk to you later.